This episode of The Avengers begins with Clint Barton, aka Hawkeye, waking up in the forest of Alfheim, unaware of where he is, when horsemen hurriedly pass through him. He follows them past the forest to find himself at the edge of the realm. One of the horsemen almost hit him, to which he apologizes as they were escaping from Loki's army. He would have been roadkill if that hit him. Out of nowhere, he is suddenly surrounded by feral wolves. He tries to escape, but they eventually catch up to him, to which he breaks his bow, defending himself. As the wolves are ready to pounce, the elf rider returns, feeling guilty for leaving him behind. In Asgard, Loki tells the narrative of how Thor failed to protect the defenseless King Odin while he slept to replenish his powers. Thor remains Loki's captive, bound to chains that drain his strength, while his weapon Mjolnir is bound to the ground. Loki explains how although Asgardian warriors Baldr, Sif, and the others remain vigilant, their weak minds are their downfall. They were unprepared for Loki as if they had not expected someone to steal Odin's powers while he slept. Thor claims that the Odin force is only meant for his father, but Loki insists that Odin is a liar. He explains how Odin has killed his true father and stolen him as a child only to be treated as a lesser being. Sheesh, adopted kids can often be so ungrateful. He claims that the Odin Force will soon be his and will have all the Nine Realms bow to him. He explains how he conquered all Nine Realms except for Midgard, which he will also quickly conquer. Meanwhile, Hank Pym, aka Giant Man, finds himself in an unconscious Janet Van Dyne, aka the Wasp, on the snowy Alps of Jotunheim. Trying to figure out where and how they got there, they are suddenly attacked by frost giants who don't take kindly to them trespassing. Seeing their hostile hospitality, Giant Man uses his powers and confronts them head on. He managed to beat them, but more frost giants showed up. Ymir, the king of Jotunheim and the ruler of the frost giants, opens the legendary artifact, the Casket of Ancient Winters, to blow Giant Man away and trap him in ice. As they slowly approach him, Giant Man stands up to them when, out of nowhere, a portal opens, and Sif and a couple of Valkyries come to his rescue. While they attack the Frost Giants, Giant Man runs to Wasp to protect her when Ymir reopens the casket, sending Giant Man into the ravine. Sif catches him on her Pegasus, and together they escape from Ymir and the Frost Giants. He will definitely take a hit on his pride as a man being saved by a woman on a flying horse. Steve Rogers, aka Captain America, finds himself stranded in the mystical realm of Niflheim, where the past haunts him. He sees dead friends and colleagues who blame him for their deaths. Well, this is the part when Haley Joel Osment told Bruce Willis, I see dead people. Promising him a sense of relief from the struggles of being a hero, he almost succumbs to it when he later realizes that he is still alive. He later came to his senses when he couldn't find his friend James Buchanan, Bucky Barnes, in one of the ghosts. He claims that his fight isn't over and insists on fighting until the day he can't fight anymore. Once determined, the mist clears up and finds himself before Hela, the goddess of death, who claims he isn't leaving. Bruce Banner, aka the Hulk, wakes up in Vanaheim underwater and finds a giant axe nearby. He quickly confronts an enemy convoy in the distance transporting prisoners. Hulk fights his way through overwhelming numbers and is shocked to discover that the axe has mystical powers that send an ice shockwave through the ground. They overwhelm him with their numbers, but Hulk overpowers them and knocks them all down, freeing their prisoners. He then blows them away with a powerful thunderclap. The Asgardian warriors rise up and ask for his help to regain their kingdom. T'Challa, aka the Black Panther, gets stranded in the barren wasteland of Svartalfheim with death creeping over the horizon. He finds the bones of dead dark elves when phantom ghosts of tortured souls suddenly chase him. What is it with Black Panther that he is always surrounded by death? As they quickly swarm at him, he tries to fend them off with his weapon, which is ineffective. He notices a well in the far distance where power converges, so he breaks for it. He throws his weapon at the phantom ghosts to buy time to reach the well. 
Tony Stark, aka Iron Man, wakes up in a cave being dragged around by dwarves. Atri introduces himself as the King of Nidavellir. When asked how he got there, Iron Man explains how his last recollection was destroying a Norn stone. Atri claims that the Norn stones are powerful magic and suspects it to be part of Loki's plans. When Iron Man insists on looking for his team, Atri claims they must first get to safety and return to the Forge, the remaining free stronghold. Suddenly the ground shook and the troll Lord Ulic caught up to them. The dwarves defended their king but stood no chance against him. Iron Man walks in front and catches Ulic off guard with a point-blank plasma beam that knocks him down. Ulic brushes Iron Man and Itri away. When Iron Man tries to attack him with a pulse beam again, Ulic breaks his mechanical arm. Cornered, Iron Man runs towards Itri's sword before Ulic captures him. Ulic is confident that the sword wouldn't do him much harm, but Iron Man uses it to pry his arc reactor open, which blasts Ulic away with its pure, raw energy and finally knocks him out. It's sad when they're ugly and dumb. Itri quickly runs to piece back his arc reactor, saving Iron Man's life in the nick of time. He urges him to return to the forge before more of Loki's men appear. In Asgard, Thor realizes that the Enchantress stole the Norn stones for him, but Loki explains that it was simply a small part of his plan. He claims to be responsible for everything that happened and explains how his failed assault on Asgard was only a ruse to make Thor believe that he had captured him. He predicted that Odin would exile him, and he would then be free to set his plans in motion away from prying eyes, this sneaky little rascal. He claims that he was the one who orchestrated the argument between Thor and Odin, which resulted in the former leaving Asgard and playing the hero in Midgard with the other Avengers. Loki explains that once he saw that his friends were in danger, he wouldn't leave them, forcing Thor to stay in Midgard. With Thor finding allies in the Avengers, Loki orders the Enchantress to come up with enemies to keep them busy. Loki was then free to complete the invasion of the other realms and conquer them, except for Midgard, where Thor and the Avengers were. He claims that Amora the Enchantress must have failed her mission because of her love for Thor, but now that he has Thor captive, he can conquer Midgard whenever. Love triumphs all, or so it did. In Alfheim, the elf rider asks Hawkeye to use his bow and claims that his arrows have a special effect that is effective against the wolves. When their horse finally gives out, Hawkeye and the elf stand their ground, making the last of whatever arrows they have left. When they finally run out, the elf takes out his sword and introduces himself as the elf Faraday. Once archers run out of arrows, they become walking targets. As they prepare to make the last stand, Black Panther beats them all down. Faraday worries that King Frey must have fallen against Loki's army, but reassures them that a boat can take them to safety. Although thrown in different realms, the Avengers slowly come together to defeat a common enemy, Loki. Iron Man returns to the forge in Nidavellir to recreate his armor, while Giant Man and the Wasp hitch a ride with Sifu and the Valkyries to Asgard. Hawkeye and Black Panther have boarded a ship back to Asgard with Faraday. While Loki takes the throne of Asgard, Hulk and the Warriors Three attack the Bifrost Bridge that Loki's men guard. When Hulk recklessly charges at them, he disrupts their formation and is quickly surrounded. This is why brains beat bronze every single time. Suddenly, a portal opens, and Sif, Giant Man, Wasp, and the Valkyries come to their rescue. Hawkeye, Black Panther, and Farade also arrive and ram the ship to push the Frost Giants off the bridge, while the others defeat the rest. It's like a fun game of bowling, and the enemies are the bowling pins. After a brief reunion, Hawkeye explains how they were about to breach the castle when the others sounded the alarms. Black Panther explains that Faraday told them how Loki has conquered the Nine Realms except for Midgard, to which they thwarted the Enchantress's Masters of Evil back on Earth. Having said that, Lady Sif rallies the others to fight against Loki, but excludes the Avengers, worried for their safety. Well, not to be a party pooper, but they did save them, you know? Hawkeye objects, but Lady Sif explains that with Loki tapping into Odin Force, they will be no match for him. 
Giant Man explains that with Midgard next, they will need to fight Loki one way or another. At Niflheim, Hela tries to convince Captain America to give up fighting and claims that he is due for a well-deserved rest from all the fighting. He sees through her trickery and insists on continuing to fight. Hela explains that she is already aware that Loki plans to betray her once he is done with Thor. Captain America demands that she take him to fight Loki, to which she agrees under one condition. You know what they say, never make a deal with the devil. Should he fall in battle, his soul will be hers for the taking. Loki discovers that the Avengers and the Asgardian warriors are storming the castle. He unleashes Horfin, a giant frost wolf, to attack the intruders. Neither their weapons nor their individual strength was a match for it. When it was about to attack Wasp, Hawkeye, and Black Panther, Captain America arrived and tossed his shield at the monster's nose. And no, this isn't a soft tap on the nose. With Captain America on the battlefield, he gives orders to use each other's strengths effectively. Giant Man and Hulk each take a leg to pin it down while the others focus their attack on the monster's eyes and mouth. Hawkeye shoots Horfin's eyes, which the Wasp uses to conduct electricity to attack the creature. When it is about to use its breath attack, Black Panther jumps into its mouth and uses Captain America's shield to block it. Hulk also jumped inside and forced it open while Black Panther threw his weapon down its throat as Giant Man kept his mouth open by pulling its hair. They later drive the Frost Wolf to break the castle walls. As they stormed into the castle, Captain America demanded Loki surrender. When he refused, they quickly surrounded him, but Loki single-handedly defeated them. Wow, despite their numbers, they couldn't even do anything to one man. He easily blew away the Hulk while rendering their weapons ineffective. He then slowly approaches Captain America and breaks his shield with his trident. As he looks down on them about to finish them all, Iron Man makes a flashy entrance, having completed his armored suit with King Eitri's help. He explains how his armor is made from the same material as Thor's hammer. Iron Man buys them time and lures Loki to fight in the air while the others free Thor. Loki uses his mind powers on Iron Man, but Captain America stops him with Sif's shield. Thor tries to pick up his hammer, but the enchantment on it is so strong that he screams in pain. Giant Man, Black Panther, and Hawkeye find Yggdrasil Tree, hoping to break Loki's connection to the Odin Force. Hawkeye tries to shoot it down, but Black Panther stops him, claiming that the Tree of Life holds all of reality, and worries that taking it down would have grievous consequences on all nine realms. They are suddenly incapacitated by a sonic attack from a couple of birds perched on the tree. Thor finally breaks his hammer free and joins the fight. Out of nowhere, Loki is overwhelmed by the Odin Force and goes out of control. Thor urges him to stop, as it could destroy all the Nine Realms, but he refuses. Giant Man sneaks up from behind the tree and pulls it out, waking Odin up. As his link to the Odin Force is severed, Loki falls and is surrounded by the Avengers. He refuses to give up when Odin comes up from behind and restrains him with his power. After all the scheming Loki has done to overthrow him, Odin is dismayed that he decides to exile him. With Odin back, he welcomes Thor, who has returned in their time of need, but Thor explains that the Avengers saved all nine realms from Loki. Despite being mortals, they have achieved a feat that no human has ever done. That said, Odin thanks the Avengers while the others chant their names in praise. Meanwhile, Loki finds himself before a giant serpent who blinds him with its acid. When they return to Earth, Steve looks at a piece of the shattered shield and is reminded of his promise to Hela. Out of nowhere, his lookalike emerges from the shadow, who then shoots him with his gun, later revealed to be a scroll. We appreciate you for sticking to the end of the video, let us know how you felt about the recap and please check out these other videos and make sure to subscribe and tap the bell to be notified about our latest videos. See you soon.